Welcome back to the Boot Tragedies. All right, y'all, welcome back. I know it's been a minute since, you know, we've done some of these game breakdowns, film breakdowns, but I'm back. Back at it right now. All right, today we, we're breaking down Tano Passano. I worked on that for like three minutes before <laughs> I came on here, too. So Tano Passano. Hopefully I, I pronounce his name all year if he makes some plays for us. But, yeah, defense and for the Chiefs. Um, didn't play as much. He played behind Okafor. Um, and I'm drawing a blank by the other guy who came from Seattle, Frank Clark. So he didn't get to play, you know, that much. But when he did, he played He played fairly well for him. So we'll check this uh, game out against the Packers. We'll have, you know, two very good tackles, especially a left tackle, uh, David. And I can't pronounce his last name. Bakhtari or something like that. Bakhtari. Yeah, good push from him on this play. You can probably see it better from his back angle right here. Great push up the field against that right tackle, however, which I always say I hate. They only rush three, so they got no pressure up the middle. End up giving up that first down. I hate rushing three guys, especially on third and four, and especially against Aaron Rodgers. All right, at right in this time. He got held like hell. Okay, I think they called it. Yep. Run that back a little bit. It's good strength. I like that. He's trying to get that on bar right there, but he's just holding it. So nothing he can do there. Got held, as you can see. The ref called it. Don't think the ref will call it once he's wearing black and gold, because y'all know how that go. But. Hey, he got the call here. So yeah, I think if he if he doesn't get held right there, he either makes the play or the linebacker makes that play because he slows him down more. So a good play right there against I me, mean, one of the best tackles, you know, in the game. I wonder if someone got hurt this game because I was looking through his snap percentage. He played like seventy five to eighty percent of the snaps against the Packers, which is much more than he was playing. He was playing like twenty, thirty percent, just a sub guy. You know, just a breather guy. But this game, he played 80% of the snaps. So, this, this that's why I chose this game. Once again, right here, right in. Oh, man, he plays this perfectly. He plays this perfectly. And helps him up. What a nice guy at the end. It's so much going on here where he can get confused. Let's slow this down. This is great. This is just doing your assignment, which I love. So obviously, let's follow that. We have this motion, the jet sweep coming. And that's, I think that's Sorensen right here. That's his job. So as a defensive end, you don't worry about that. You don't jump outside to go to that. You let the guy who's supposed to handle that, handle that. So boom, he's not worried about that. He's still playing that dive, kind of looking in the backfield to see what's going on. He notices, boom. His tight end's trying to come back door in this little play action, which is also not his guy, but gives him a chip like he's supposed to. Knocks him, knocks him off his route. Now you get to the quarterback. And that's just perfectly done. Now Aaron Rodgers in no man's land. Close down on him. It's a perfect play. Let's watch that one more time, full speed. That's perfect football right there. Doesn't get any better. Just do your job. Everything about that was perfect. Let's see if we can see something else on this angle. A lot of window dressing in this play. That's excellent. Okay, we got a third and six here. And notice they moved him inside. He's basically right over the center on this play which I like that versatility for him. That's a good fire off the ball. He actually did outstanding on this play. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. We're not done. Oh, he actually got the sack. Okay, he deserved that sack. He deserved that. You can't really tell, but, I mean, his defensive ends, they sold him out to dry. I don't know who these DNs are, but they definitely sold him out to dry here because he gets excellent, excellent push up the middle. However, the defensive ends, maybe they're just trying to keep containment on Aaron Rodgers. So 
they're not really rushing upfield, which I understand, because you know once Aaron Rodgers break the pocket, he's he's deadly. But let's see, we can see the rush better from here. They start on the 18 yard line. Well, not the 18. I'm, that's the 22 yard line. I'm thinking they're in the red zone. So you got on a 22 yard line from the snap, and within a second, I mean, look, he pushes the guy all the way back to the 15. So that's seven, eight yards deep in the pocket. So, like I said, if Aaron Rodgers actually got pressure from the outsides up here, he would have had to step up in the pocket. But it wasn't anywhere to step up because passing, though. I mean, he got too much pressure up the middle. So that's a real good job by him. And he keeps fighting, keeps fighting. While Rodgers tried to extend the play, gets a sack. That's good football. Okay, first problem I've noticed, and obviously this is his first time, you know, really playing a lot of snaps for the, for the Chiefs. So the Packers don't really have film on him, but obviously, you know how they review the plays as you go back, you know. So it's the second quarter now. And if you watch the, the first couple plays I put in here, look at this gap. He lines up every play too wide of a stance, in my opinion. I don't know if the Chiefs taught him that or that's just, you know, what he feels. He's used to coming in on pass plays, so he's always in a pass set almost, ready to rush the passer. But that's way too big of a gap on a first and 10. And as you can see, the Packers probably started picking up on that, and they're just going to run right to the gap. I mean, it makes perfect sense. They've probably seen it on the little pictures they've taken. It's like, all right, well, you line up that far, we'll just make this easy. And that's a uh, first and 10. They get eight yards on that play. They'll take that 100 times out of 100. So, yeah, you can definitely see it from this. Like, look at the difference from, you know, this left side to the right side. It's a huge, huge gap right here. I know they're filling it with the linebackers, but those big boys getting downhill, it's never going to work. So, yeah, small problem. Easy, very obviously easily fixed. You just scoot your ass over a little bit. But, yeah. Okay, this right here is the end of the half. Obviously, you see the Chiefs prevent. Everybody's deep. So, obviously, it's three seconds left. They can get a Hail Mary off, and Aaron Rodgers can definitely get it to the end zone from, you know, 55, 60 yards out. So, you know, still have to take this play serious. Once again, he went crazy up the middle. Give him his second sack of the half right there. That's what I've, I've noticed. They they like to line him up inside and outside. He can do both. Uh, he has a big enough frame. Don't know his measurements exactly, but he looks like a big solid dude. Reminds me a lot of Davenport when he first came out. Just raw, athletic, bigger and stronger than you. I'll show flashes sometimes and things like that. So, once again, he's not on the, one of the best tackles in the game. Just on that center. I mean, center stood no chance right there. Turn that back. He just easily slid on through there. Another sack on the board in the half. But yeah, I'll end that right there. Um, he looks solid. Looks solid. I think he'll be a rotational player at best um, for the Saints. But he can kind of play inside and outside, so that's good. So on those on those third downs, those NASCAR packages, you can always see him, Cam Jordan, maybe line up inside with Grandison and Davenport on the outside or on, on your monitor, Roach, Tuttle. It's, it's options on that D-line. So I think we'll have a solid eight guys this year. So it's going to be hard to, you know, crack in the, the rotation. But he, like I said, he looks good, man. He's athletic, big dude from Villanova. Made some smart plays on film. Wish I could, you know. Wish he played more, like full games and things like that, and not at his full first full game is against you know a top five tackle in the NFL. But also you see him against the best, so you know if, if he can do this against the best, then you know what he can do against everybody else. Like I said, did most of his damage inside, which which I like a lot. That means you're versatile, can get on the you know get on the field much more than if you just play left and the right end. He played both end positions, both tackle positions inside, so that's that's a real good thing. Uh, needs to work on some of his pass rush moves a little bit. He's just a little, little. Uh, I'm just gonna run at you and try to overpower you. Not enough wiggle in this game, from what I've seen. But this is my first game watching him. I'll watch a little more, and then uh, maybe if I'll maybe I'll make a part two or something like that. But we'll see. All right, man. Thank y'all for tuning in once again, man. This is the Boot Tragedies, and I'm out.